Did you ever wonder how you can make really superior grass animation completely in geometry nodes? Hey, welcome to this video. Today I will show you this really realistic way of animating grass or simulating grass um, with the help of geometry nodes. How you can make really realistic grass and wind animations where the grass bends like that according to the wind. And we will make everything in geometry nodes, even the grass itself. So let's open up the new Splendor version 3.3 beta with the uh, new splash screen from Piotr Krinsky. I hope I... <laughs> Set it right. You can download the newest beta um, always on the Blender launcher or on the Blender website uh, Blender.org and now we can start. We will be starting with only a plane and that's actually the only thing you have to do outside of geometry nodes. Yay! That's a really beginner course here. <laughs> Not, I'm joking. Um, now let's hop on to geometry nodes. We are ready with the ground of our grass. And now we can go on to geometry nodes and we can create a new node tree like that. And I will spread it a little bit so we have more room to work with. And so a grass field is full of multiple grass plates. We have to define all the positions for those plates. And for this, we have the distribute points on faces node. And we can plug that in here. And now it distributes a bunch of points on our plane. So those points are symbolizing um, positions that get created. And later on, we can instance on those positions our various grass plates. So instancing means geometry puts on every point here another object that we have to define. So with that, we can instance on those points here and I want to create a curve primitive, a curve line. So I'll add nodes with shift A, or you can add them on the top here. And we can plug that into the instance. And now we are generating positions with this node here. And we are putting this object with this node onto our points that we create. And at, at the moment, this is only a curve, a straight curve line, and I will shorten it a little bit like this. You may now say, well, we are ready, but no, I want them to bend over according to a uh, wind that we have to generate. So, how can we do this? First of all, we have we need to have more resolution on our uh, curve line here because curve lines have only two points, the start and the end point. And so we have to resample this curve um, for more resolution. So we can't see a difference, but that is because this line is perfectly straight. I will maybe stuck with a resolution of five, so five points per uh, curve line. And now we are ready with distributing our um, basic curves for the um, grass plates. And now we can move on with bending our curves and then we define the strength of the bending um, with a noise texture that will then look like wind. So for bending our curves, we will be using a set position node because we want to because we want to change the position of our points along our grass plates or our primitive curves line and you can only change the position with with the set position node i will be using the position node into the position and i will then use a vector rotate node because because i want to rotate every single grass plate a little bit here into the y-axis so bending it a little bit but so currently nothing happens and this because first of all we have to realize our instances 
So currently, geometry nodes, um, geometry nodes, nodes displace every curve in the viewport, but not really the data of every single curve is not really there because therefore instances exist. So geometry nodes doesn't have the data of every single curve here. So it's cheaper to render. So for that we have to um, realize our instances. So now we have the full control over every single curve. But now you can see also nothing happens and because we have to define an angle here. And you can see something is happening. So I want to have the length of every single curve because here on the bottom I want to have the value of 0 and on the top the value of 1 so that the grass blade will remain at its position on the bottom and the more you go to the top the more it will bend and so I need the length of every single curve blade and we have a node for this it is the spline parameter node and we can plug the factor into the angle and now you can see something is happening but not really that what we want I mean if you want to have that kind of pattern <laughs> you can use that I mean it's interesting um, but I don't want to have that kind of pattern so we have still problems here so the problem is we have realized our instances so the position that we are using here is not the position of every single grass plate it is the position of the whole thing and we don't want that we want to have first of all we don't want to have it rotating like this we want to have it in another direction like so so we want to have this kind of behavior on every single spline. How can we do this? We have to capture our position on every single instance. And we can do this by using the capture attributes node. And we have to use this, of course, before the realize instances node, because we have to capture it on the instances. So set it to vector because the position is a vector and we want to plug it into the value and the attribute goes into the center because we now shift the position to the center of every single spline but we have to set it to instance so now we can see yay it works <laughs> great wonderful so now you can see what the resolution does and if you want to change the amount of bending you can always use use a math node plug it into the spline factor because this is what drives the angle here is the length of the spline and you can use a multiply to change the amount of bending every single grass blade has. So now we have basically the core structure of our whole thing, but now we want to have a little bit of variation because come on, this is boring. What is this? <laughs> it's nothing, a bunch of curves don't even get rendered. So let me change the scale a bit so they appear to be more. <laughs> so we don't run into um, much performance problems. And I have to give props to the Arendale um, Discord server. They helped me with this setup here, those three nodes. And now we can move on with the animation. So I want to have a noise texture that goes over the whole thing and defines here the strength of the bending and it's relatively easy we can use with shift a we can do on the add menu and we can use a texture a noise texture 
and we can plug the color into the value. And this is doing something. I will be using a color ramp to decrease the contrast a little bit. And we can see it's a little bit messy. And it's not quite what we want because currently the noise texture, the noise texture influences every single point on our spline. We don't want this. We want to, um, we want to have the noise texture influencing the whole spline as, as it is. And so if we, if we change the resolution, you can see we don't want this kind of stuff. We want to have every single spline to be one value of this noise texture. So I will change it back to five. So we have a resolution. And so we have to clamp the noise texture to every single instance. I mean, as we did here. So we will capture the noise texture on here and we will set it to color, of course. And now it should be better. Yes, we can use more grass blades. And of course, we have to change the scale of the whole thing. So now we can see the effect. But of course, we have to also animate our noise texture. And we can do this by using the position input and to adding a value to this position. So we can use an input position node into the vector. Nothing changes because it uses the position input anyways. So we will be using a vector math node to add here this noise texture. And we want to add it on the x axis. And so this is the x axis. And I want to use the input scene time node. So this gives the value of the frame we are currently at. So this outputs the time. And I will be using the, I will be using a combine XYZ node. So we can split every single axis into separate field inputs. And so we can drag the seconds into the X axis. Now we can see, but I want to have it inverted. So it comes this direction. So I will take a math node and I will multiply it by minus one. So it is inverted. And now we have a nice animation, but of course we have to also, so now that our curves, we have to convert them to meshes to be seen in the viewport. So if we go to Eevee, you can see we can see them. And so for that, we have a node, a curve to mesh node. We can plug this in here. And for the profile curve, I want to have another curve line primitive, like so, and plug it into the profile curve. And this is not working because we don't want to have it in the Z axis. We want to have them in the Y axis. So I type 0 0.01. And this is not the Y axis either. This is the X axis 0 0.002 like this. And now they have actually geometry, but now we can see we have a problem on the top. They should be in a scale of zero and on the bottom they should remain on the scale. And we also pulled this information from the spline parameter. So we can just do it again. And for this, we will be using the set curve radius node here in the curve submenu. And we can just plug the spline parameter into the radius. And with this, we are basically now saying we will be using the length of our curve to define the radius. And then the curve to mesh node uses the radius information to scale our curve line down here. 
but we can see this is exactly the opposite of directions so we will either use a map range node or you can use a color ramp to flip or invert our result so we will be setting the 2 min to 1 and the 2 max to 0 and now we can see now the tips are scaled to 0 and this is basically the whole system we can always bump this values up here to see a better overview and we can of course always change the resolution if we want like this and you can also change the scale of the noise texture and you can define of course how stormy it is with the multiply here so if you will set it to minus 0 0.01 it, okay that's unrealistic but <laughs> minus 0 0.05 it's not that stormy and if we will set it to minus 2 it's very stormy so you can change everything it's procedural and we can of course change also the height so i think this should be the whole th system i hope you liked um, this approach of creating grass i think it's a really great way of um, building environments like that i always loved grass um, bending in the wind like that and i hope you could learn something from this tutorial if you have a project and you want to use grass in it you can maybe consider um, using an approach like that and if you need also materials um, in your project then you can check out um, my gumroad i have a material pack on here with up to um, 300 materials that you can use in your project um, i have also a free version so if you want to try that try it it's for free you can download it here on my gumroad and you can maybe give me feedback of what you guys want to see next as a video. So the next video is planned, the, um, the uh, video after. And thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked the tutorial and see you later.